Today, I'm gonna to show you exactly how to use browser use web UI, which is basically a powerful AI agent you can set up for free directly on your browser. And this can just go off and do whatever you tell it to do. Now it's really easy to set up. I'll show you how to do that in a second, but what I'm gonna show you today shocked me. Now, what you will see is that you can actually plug in the agent type and you can select custom, for example, you can actually give it multiple steps to complete the action. And also here you can see that you can select between using vision and not using vision which means that the AI can see your screen or not see your screen if you disable it. From here, you can actually select multiple different APIs. And this is where DeepSeek version three comes into play because you can select DeepSeek as the API and then plug in your API key directly here. And you can also choose between using your own browser or using a browser from web UI. And additionally, you can just give it tasks. So I'm gonna show you some of the best tasks that you can use to program this today, but it's pretty amazing what you can do and you can also record your screen along the way so you can see how it works and that sort of thing. So when you get straight into it, the way that you set it up is by using these GitHub instructions. So you're going to go to browser use web UI. You'll get all the video notes from today if you want to follow and steal this process step by step along with my best prompts. And directly inside here, you can see that you just need Python 3.1 or higher installed. And then from here, you go to your terminal, copy each instruction as you can see, and then get it set up. And um, once you have that set up, you'll be able to host it locally, like you can see right here. So you can see I literally just followed the steps step by step. It wasn't actually working for me at one point. So what I did was I actually just pasted in any problems that I had. So you can do the same, like you can do it inside Claude, just paste any issues that you're finding when it comes to setting this up. And then once you've done, it will give you instructions on exactly how to set that up and correct any problems that you have along the way. Pretty easy and simple to do. And now we can get around to getting this set up. So what we're gonna do from here, is we're going to select custom as the agent type then you can choose between how many maximum steps you want it to use to complete so we're just going to stick with the default of 100. now if you're using deep seek version 3 it actually doesn't have vision so you don't need to use that and then from here we can say okay we'll use deep seek api and we'll select the model name now i'm also going to show you how to use this with a free api in a second but we'll come on to that later and if you want to get an api from deep seek you can just go to deepseek.com the api is just extremely cheap you can see that i actually topped the balance of ten dollars a week ago this only cost me two cents so far to use it so the actual monthly expenses is ridiculously cheap from here we're going to create a new api key let's create the api key like so we'll copy that plug it into browser web ui here we go and then you're going to select the model name. If you want to use DeepSeek version three, then you would select DeepSeek hyphen chat. So you just type that in inside the model name. And then from here, you've got the API details ready to go. Now, what you'll see inside the settings here is that you can actually decide whether you want to use your own browser or the browser from browser use web UI. I'll show you how that works in a second. You can also, for example, select the browser width and height. And here's what's interesting is you can actually save the recording session. So for example, when the AI agent is using your browser, you can record the whole screen and it will be like a screencast recording right here. And then for example, if we use a default task, go to google.com and type open AI, click search and give me the first URL, we can run the agent like, so let's test this bad boy out. I'm just going to go with the default prompt, which is go to google.com, type open AI, click search and give me the first URL, right? And then we can hit run agent like so. Now you can see it's navigating to its browser and you can see it's now on google.com. It's analyzing the page using vision. It's typing in openai.com. Again, my hands are in the air. I'm not touching this. And you can see here that now it's grabbing the URL from the page. It's quite interesting how it actually analyzes the page. So you can see it selects different parts. And if we go to the last recording over here, we can actually play that back and we can see what happened. So this is the video recording. It's basically recorded a screencast, done its magic. I actually think this would be quite interesting for a YouTube video. Like you could create an AI voice to go over this YouTube video, and then you could have the AI voiceover talking about whatever tool you're talking about and actually using the screen at the same time. And then inside the recording section, if we scroll down, you can see that it gave us the final result. So it copied the main URL from Google, which is what we wanted it to do. It's got some information on errors, model thoughts so you can see it's thought process right there let's post that into a new chat let's have a look what happened here so you can actually see the thought process here what it did how it worked etc and yeah pretty amazing the thing is as well because it's interacting with my own browser because i changed the browser settings to so let's try something else now i'm going to see i'm going to change this to use own browser like you can see here then we're going to go to task settings and i'm going to say go to ahrefs then go to keyword explorer then do some 
keyword research for my SEO agency. We're going to hit run agent. So honestly, from what I've seen though, using your own browser doesn't work great. So I'm going to disable that because it doesn't seem to work so well. Whereas it seems to work much better in its own browser. And then from here, we're going to say, okay, go to Google and I'm going to try this, right? So we'll see whether we can test the limits of this. I'm going to say, go to google.com, type in best SEO agency, Japan. Give me a content outline based on my competitors for SEO. And from here as well, I'm going to say you're an SEO expert, right? So we're going to hit run agent. So see how it performs. So it's gone directly to Google. It's typed in the keyword, as you can see. Now it has come up with a notification. I don't know whether it's going to be able to block that notification or not. It has managed to get around that. Now there's another pop-up and you can see that it's looking through the page. So it's typed in the keyword best SEO agency Japan. Pretty wild to see like the AI just navigating the internet and analyzing exactly what it needs to do, etc. It seems to be changing the language right now. So I I don't know what language he wants to speak. It's, it looks like it's changing into English. There we go. The thing that I've noticed with this is it can follow a lot more steps. So for example, if you're using something like Claude, computer agent, it seems to break within a couple of steps, right? It doesn't seem to get very far. Whereas with browser use web UI, it seems to be a lot more competent at figuring out, okay, here's what to do, here's where to go. And it, it can just perform more complex actions. Now it's actually created the content outline here. So let's have a look. See what we do. Interestingly, it's written it down in Markdown, which is not necessary, but let's have a look here what we got. It said, I've analyzed the search results and I've identified some of the top SEO agencies in Japan. Here's a content outline based on my analysis, introduction, list of the top SEO agencies. So it's actually taken like the names of the agencies on the list. Then it said, provide a brief overview of each agency, highlighting their strengths and services, key SEO services, how to choose the right SEO agency. Pretty interesting that it has actually done the research, figured it all out for us. And then based on that, it started creating the content analysis. Now I'm going to say, okay, go to google.com, find me the cheapest flights from Bangkok to UK. And I'm going to change this now to you're an executive assistant. One of the other benefits of this as well is because you're actually using the latest APIs, whether that's DeepSeek version three, whether that's, for example, Gemini Flash Experimental. Because you're using these newer APIs, you can get much better outputs, right? Whereas, for example, if you were using something like Claude Computer Use, that's not been updated for months since its release. And so you're not going to get the same level of outputs. I'm really determined to try and use my own browser, but I just don't think it's going to work. Let's click this as well, see what that does. Yeah, it just has errors. So when you use a browser, it doesn't seem to work. Maybe I need to allow something inside the settings there, but it just doesn't work so far. So switch off those two features and then we'll get back to it. And let's see what it does now. How good is it at actual research tasks? Because for example, you can imagine like these sort of basic admin tasks where someone just needs to click buttons and it's not a very highly skilled job can now be replaced by AI, right? And the thing is, these are the worst that these AI agents are ever going to be. And you can do this for free as well. These AI agents are only going to improve over this year. I can imagine ChatGPT, Claude, Google, they're all going to be releasing their own agents pretty soon, maybe within the next couple of months or so. But then number two, if you've got the choice between getting an AI agent to do it for you or hiring a virtual assistant that might cost like five, 10, $15 an hour, of course, you're going to go directly with the AI agent, right? Just makes sense, especially for businesses or people using executive assistants. So it's really important to figure this out because you got to understand, okay, where's the industry going? But then also, okay, where does, what jobs are actually still going to be necessary? For example, if I look over the last sort of past 12 months, two years or so, since using ChatGPT, we don't really hire human writers anymore. We don't hire photographers anymore. All the editing on my main AI channel is done with AI using Descript, not with a human, right? And we're seeing it unroll in real time, right? So it's really important to experiment with these, even if they're not 100% perfect, simply because it will change the world. And things are only going one way if you can see what's happening right now in real time. For example, like even for coding, I wouldn't hire a developer anymore, especially a front end one, because I can develop whatever tool or whatever SaaS tool I need in the space of minutes using something like Bolt DIY. And that won't cost me a penny. And also it's a lot faster. It's super important to figure this stuff out now. So let's have a look at this. So we've got the output from the browser. It said the cheapest flight I found from Bangkok to the UK is to London for 23,000. Departing on May the 12th, returning on May 25th with one stop and a total travel time of 19 hours, 50 minutes. The flights are with Shanghai Airlines and China Eastern, right? 
And so that's a pretty detailed and comprehensive analysis. We could have given it the dates and how much we wanted to spend, but honestly, is that cheaper, faster, and easier than using an assistant to go and do it for you? Absolutely. And so give it six months, give it 12 months. Who knows what the world's going to look like? So thanks so much for watching. If you want to get full access to all the SAPs and instructions on exactly how to set this up, you can directly inside my free SEO course, link in the comments description. What you also find inside the video notes from today is 50 use cases and prompts of exactly how you can use this in real time. So it's very practical. And that's included inside my free SEO course. This comes with web lessons on how to do SEO with step-by-step -step tutorials, SAPs, tips, templates, 50 free SEO tools, and a community of 3,000 SEOs that are there to help you with any questions that you have. Now, if you scroll down to the free SEO tool section, you'll find loads of cool stuff, including the video notes from today, which are directly down here. And you can get access to all the links, all the tips, all the prompts and the SAP from today step by step directly inside the comments and description of this video. Additionally, if you want to get a free SEO strategy session that shows you how we take websites from zero to 145,000 business month and generate hundreds of thousands of dollars in sales on autopilot, feel free to book then. We'll show you on this free link building acceleration session, you'll get a free SEO donation plan, discover the secrets of SEO link building. We'll answer any questions you have one-to-one. -one. You'll learn the best link building strategy for your website, plus how to quickly outrank your competitors link building and how to 10x SEO traffic based on what's working for us. Feel free to get that. Appreciate you watching as always. See you on the next one. Bye-bye.